Let's now tackle this really cool dio, this really cool equation from the AMC 12. How many pairs of ordered real numbers satisfy this? First thing you can immediately see, we've got a factor of two here. We've got a factor of two here. Let's divide. So doing so, we get, I mean, this is a simple step. One plus two A, one plus B, two A plus B, 16 AB. So for this problem, the first thing you should be like is, huh, there are two variables, but only one equation. So if we we're dealing with linear equations, let's say we had like three X plus two Y equals 10 then we would have an infinite number of solutions. So maybe that is an infinite number of solutions in this case, but we'll see. So how are we supposed to know the solutions? Like, something to notice here is that another thing you can notice is this side has an A term and a B term, right? So it has degree two, basically, in terms of A and B. This side, well, if we expand it out, some terms will have an A term, B term, and, and another A term. So an A squared B term, or an A term, B term, and another B term. So an A B squared term. So imagine we have this, right? We have A, A squared B, A B squared on this side, versus on this side, we just have A B. So as A and B get very, very large, this thing is gonna completely outpace this thingy. So this makes this question, hmm, maybe, is there like an upper bound for A and B or something in terms of A and B, there's an upper bound. Why? Because there will be some point where this side, if you like draw the graphs or something in like 2D, I don't know how you would draw the graphs, but if you like a 3D graph or something, this left side, while it might start slow, in the long run will completely outpace 16AB because there's simply more variables. So if there's like some kind of upper bound we can kind of look at here, that will be really useful because that will give us, you know, a finite number of possibilities to check. So the, the thing is here is the, huh, this is very, very uh, ugly expression, right? One plus two A, one plus B, two A plus B. Mm. So kind of the first thing that intuitively I would do, this is absolutely not necessary to solve the problem, but this is something I would do just out of, you know, reference because it doesn't really matter. I would just make the substitution 2a equals c because now I have 1 plus c, 1 plus b, and b plus c. Now, and this is equal to 8bc. This doesn't really do anything, but it just makes it symmetric, right? So now I have c, b, and b plus c. I don't have to deal with any twos here. So just like earlier, this side completely outpaces this side. So maybe there's some upper bound or something for b and c. This kind of say we're talking a lot about bounds here, upper bound. We should maybe try some inequality stuff. Okay, so the first thing you might try is you might be like, oh, AMGM, right? If you watch my AMGM video, you know AMGM is good for minimizing sums and maximizing products. We've got a product over here. So, you know, let's try AMGM. Let's see what it, that gives us. We'd have the cube root. Uh, the cube root of b plus c, b plus 1, b plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 times b plus 2 times c plus 2, all over 3. So now we have an, we have a, we have an, basically we can write this thingy, we can say this is less than or equal to 2b plus 2c plus 2 all over three cubed. So you can say this thingy is less than or equal to two B plus two C plus two, all this divided by three, all cubed. The question is, is this really useful? Does this give us any bound on B and C? No, because take a look. Now the right side is a cubic in terms of like, it has degree three in terms of all the variables, right? Because we're cubing it. And the left side, by left side, I mean ABC, 8BC has two variables. And therefore, in the long run, B and C are going to completely outpace 8BC. Therefore, this bound is not very useful. It doesn't give us any finite number of possibilities for BC to check. 
So maybe this is not the right way to go. Because now we found that this thingy is less than or equal to something with degree 3. That's not very useful. But you know what would be very useful? If you could say that something of degree 3 was less than or equal to something of degree 2. Because then, if you have like a cubic that's less than or equal to quadratic, at some point, you have an upper bound. You're going to be able to get some kind of an upper bound. So how, so the question now becomes, can we maybe instead of finding an upper bound for this, remember, AMGM is good for maximizing products, so upper bound for products. AMGM is also good for minimizing sums, so finding a lower bound for sum. Where do we see sums here? 1 plus C. 1 plus B. B plus C. So now all we have to do is use AMGM. We have 2 square root of C times 2 square root of b, right? The reason we get this is because c plus 1 by 2 is greater than or equal to c times 1, the square root. So we just cross multiply. And then over here, it's something similar. We have b plus c over 2 is greater than or equal to bc. So b plus c is greater than or equal to 2 root bc. So we have this is all going to be less than or equal to 8bc. Take a look. What happens when we expand this here? We get 8bc. Aha! So we have this whole thing, which is equal to 8bc, is less than or equal to, we have basically, have 8bc is less than or equal to this, is equal to 8bc. What must be true about this less than or equal to? Well, it has to be an equal to. So this whole thing about AMGM, this term, and also let me just write out the other one. I know I skipped that step. For all of these, the equality case must hold. This must not be greater than or equal to, but it must actually be equal to. So we, have, we must have this, and we must have this, and we must have this. Now from here, you can just see it. what is the equality case of AMGM when these two terms are equal, so when B is 1. And when these two terms are equal, so when C is 1. Or you could also just like solve this quadratic, that's a bit harder. But you don't even need to worry about the equality case. But you, but, I mean, I guess you kind of do. You find, okay, b is 1, c is 1, and yeah, and then we can solve for a, right? A is 2a is c, so therefore a is 1 half. So we see indeed that 1 half and 1 works. And nothing else can work, because the only way a solution can work is if all three of these equality cases hold. So this is the only solution, and our answer is just 1. A brilliant problem. The key trick was, I mean, this was kind of just like a, you know, preference thing. You don't have to do that. But I like to do that because now we have symmetric stuff, so it's just a little bit easier. The key thing was this whole bounding thing, right? We got degree 3 on this side, but degree 2 on this side. So if we want to find some kind of a bound, something that, that will give us information about what can work and what can't work, then we can find a lower bound for this quantity. Because if you find a lower bound for this quantity, then we would have, okay, something is less than or equal to this, which luckily ended up being ABC in this case. Right, we want it to lower bound, because if we could have like a lower bound, which would be like some, it would be, it would be help us work and be like, okay, this equality case is less than this. Now like, that gives us a really good bound on B and C. But in this case, the bound is so good, there's only one possibility, this. Thanks for watching this video.